Welcome back to the Timber Forge. This is the third episode of how to create your own custom item inside of Minecraft. Today I will be going over how to use Blockbench, a downloadable app, to create your very own custom models for your item and how to paint it with the correct textures, how to make it display properly, and how to put it on your item using a resource pack and custom model data. In the last two episodes, we went over how to choose your item and give your item and how to create the custom abilities to make your items unique. So without further ado, let's get right into the video, starting with setting up the resource pack. And as always with these videos, there will be a table of contents in the description if you want to skip around. Okay, so before you actually get into modeling your custom item, what you want to do is set up the resource pack that you'll be using. So go into your Minecraft folder and then go to resource packs like you're installing a resource pack but then create a folder called whatever resource pack you want it to be I'm just naming it example resource pack for this example and then make a folder called assets and a text file called pack.mcmeta it has to be an mcmeta file and then it should have this text inside of it the pack format has to be 4 and the description is whatever you want and inside of the assets folder you want a minecraft folder and inside of the minecraft folder you want a models and a textures folder and the models is where your model dot json files are going to be and textures is where your textures are going to be and you'll be able to export directly out of blockbench into these two folders so you want these set up before you go into blockbench so now let's get into blockbench Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is go to blockbench.net and download Blockbench. So just go to this website and hit download and select whatever system you're operating on. So I use Mac, so this is what I download. If you're using Windows, of course, click Windows. But it should be a pretty straightforward installation, and you don't need to do too much dragging of files or anything like that. So just install it to wherever your normal applications are, and you should be fine and after you get it installed just open it up and I'll meet you inside of Blockbench. Okay so now let's get started with actually using Blockbench. So the first thing you want to do is double check that you're seeing this you should be able to see this grid if you left click you should be able to orbit around the center and then right click you should be able to pan and you should be able to your, use your scroll wheel to zoom. So what you want to do first is go over to file settings and go to snapping and make sure you have these numbers make sure your grid resolution is 16 your shift resolution is 64 and your control resolution is 256 this is basically just setting the amount of snapping that you will have when you're moving things around and these numbers I found are the best you could always shift them depending on what you're making but I recommend starting on this so now let's go over the toolbar. Here we have move, resize, rotate, pivot, and vertex snap. You're mainly going to be using move, vertex, I mean move, resize, and rotate. But first, in order to get stuff to actually use the toolbar on, what you have to do is create a cube by pressing this button. And now you'll see a bunch of stuff pops up. So this here is the movement, and this here is the size. I don't really use these too much it's a lot easier to have more control by using move and resize here so as you can see if you click and drag normally it'll snap by increments of one for both move and for resize however with the numbers that we set if we actually hold down shift as we drag it you'll see that it moves by quarter block increments and then if we hold control it'll go by sixteenths so that's why we changed those settings so that we have the most variety of amount of movement that we want. So now let's go over rotate. So just click rotate here and you'll see this thing is all the way out over here. And if we rotate, it's going to be rotating really weirdly. So what you want to do is go over to here where it says origin and click origin to geometry. And that will center it so that it rotates around the object center. And you can also use the fourth tool on the toolbar pivot tool in order to move the center around. And that will also change the rotation center. So if you want to rotate off of a certain area for some reason, then you can use that. And as with the other movement, holding shift gives you more control and control gives you more control. 
And now lastly, let's go to Vertex Snap. I don't really use it too much though. So what you want to do is click Vertex Snap and then click one corner of the cube and click another corner and it just snaps vertexes together. It's literally what it says. So that's basically it for basic cube movement. And these movements combined with each other can basically let you create anything. But something to note is that the rotate tool only lets you rotate in increments of 22.5 degrees. So you don't have the most control, but that's really all you need. You won't need too much more than that because everything will look blocky anyway. It's Minecraft, so you don't really need to do complex curves or anything. There are also a few other things that you can do. So these are just miscellaneous stuff. So here's add group. If you click this folder icon, you can group cubes into the group just to stay organized. And you can also go to transform and select some of these. So the one that doesn't show up here is flip. So this is useful if you want to flip a group of cubes over a certain axis. So let's say you're making something with symmetry, then you could just build half of it and then duplicate it and then reflect it. And to do stuff like duplicating, all you have to do is right click on a cube and you can hit duplicate. And you could also rename it, but I'm too lazy to constantly rename everything to stay organized. So I just use groups instead. But if you want to rename everything to stay really organized, then you can do that. And so I just cleared this board. And just to show you what you could do, I'm just going to make an example of Stormbreaker, the axe from Endgame. And I'm just going to be using all of these tools and the cubes that I just showed you. And it's going to be a really simple example. And if you want to skip, I'll put a timestamp so that you can skip the example of me doing it. But if you want to stay, then you can stay. I'm going to speed it up because you don't want to watch me doing like 15, 30 minutes of just moving blocks around. So I'll start right now. And also before I forget, I want to show you where to save this. So what you want to do is go to file and then go to save. And it is going to be a JSON file and I'm just going to call it stormbreaker.json. And I will go over to my Minecraft resource packs folder to our example resource pack. We set up assets, Minecraft models item right here. We want to store it and constantly save this with control S to make sure that you don't lose your progress. So now I finished the Stormbreaker main model. As you can see, it's finished. It looks not the best, but it's pretty good. And it shows you all the different things that you could do with the rotations and flipping things and rotating things. So it's a pretty good example and it looks all right. So now we have to move on to creating the textures and giving this proper color so it doesn't look like this weird mess. So what we want to do is go from edit, go in the top right corner, change from edit to paint. Now we're in the second stage and we're creating the textures for our item. So you have to think what are the main colors that you're going to be using because you're not just going to be directly painting onto the cubes. What you do is you create a square texture and you apply parts of the texture onto different parts of the custom item. So to start off, what you want to do is go to the bottom left corner and go to textures and do create texture. 
and change the resolution depending on whatever you want that's basically the dimensions of how many pixels there will be inside of the texture so if you want it detailed go to like 64 by 64 but I'm just gonna do 32 by 32 because that's all I need and background color doesn't really matter Just set it to white you're gonna be coloring over it so hit confirm and then make sure you save it to the right spot so hit save and then change it to whatever you want so the first one I'm gonna be doing is just the wood texture for the little vines on the side because it's simple to do so I'm just gonna call it wood.png and then I'm gonna select not item I'm going to go back into our example resource pack assets minecraft textures custom this time don't go into models go to textures and save it here so now it's officially saved and so now you can edit it so what I'm gonna do is apply it to the handle so I'm just gonna select the entire handle group right click this and apply to cubes and as you can see they have a white texture now which is the wood.png and so we can also edit this so you can open this up if you want and as you can see there's a bunch of stuff here I don't even use like half of this what I normally do is all you have to do is go up here and this main toolbar is what you're going to be using so just stay on the paintbrush and then round and noise is basically round means you're going to be coloring with a consistent color so if I select round and then I try to make some brown color okay if, and I get brown and then I set the size up to 10 it's a solid color but if I go to noise then you'll see that it's not a solid color it's it has noise so that could add some more variation to your texture and then opacity is how transparent it is okay so if you want to make a texture that doesn't look like a texture from Roblox it's just a flat color what you want to do is choose what color you're going to do and then get like three shades of it and then paint them over each other with noise so that it will have some variation in the surface so it doesn't look like a plastic surface so I'm gonna be doing wood so I'm gonna choose this brown color that I just did and I'll also choose another one that will be the same color except it's going to be a little lighter okay and that will be another color and so as you can see it's a very light brown and also set the opacity very low for the first passes so basically how you do this method of creating a texture that has variation is what you want to do is start with a very light version of whatever color you're using so I'm using brown so I'm going with light brown to start and I'm also turning the opacity very low and I want to click around individual clicks don't hold it down or else it'll color the whole thing in but you want to click around and gradually increase the darkness and gradually increase the opacity until you get a surface with variation that you like Remember that you can also add a lot of detail to your own texture to make it your own. So for example here I'm using black lines to represent the grain on the wood. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now what you want to do here is adjust how the texture is displayed. You can click on the side. If you go to edit, go back to edit, and you can now adjust where you want the texture to display. So I'm just going to drag them all to somewhere in the middle. And now I'm going to add another texture. I'll go back to paint, create a texture. This one's going to be for the axe blade. So I'm going to make this one 64. And I'm going to save this as the blade in the same area where the wood is. And that should be good. And now I'm just going to add some more textures. I'm going to create the blade texture and I'll apply it to here and I'll come back when that's done okay so I added one more texture blade which is a 64 by 64 texture that I made for the blade and it's basically just a white and kind of silverish color texture with a stripe in it for the stormbreaker stripe so I just added that on and that should be it for now so it looks pretty good I think it looks pretty good so now we move on to the last step which is display now this basically controls how it looks in the players hands so 
you go through all of these and you adjust the rotation, translation, and scale. So I'm just going to go left, right, top to bottom, start with third person right. Obviously, I don't want it to look like this. I want it to be rotated, not that way. And hit these little undo buttons to reset it. So the process of setting the display is super easy. You just drag all those sliders around. So I'm not going to show you in detail anything else. So I'm just going to speed through that and I'll show you the end result of the display. Okay, so now I'm back in the game. I just gave myself one of my storm breakers here. And as you can see, it's the same one that was working before. So now what we want to do is get the custom model data. And here I use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I have to remember this and go over to my resource pack. So in your resource pack, go inside, go to assets, Minecraft, and models item and inside of item you should see your stormbreaker.json and then add another json called whatever the item that you're using is so i'm using a carrot on a stick you can see it says minecraft carrot on a stick and you have to type it in exactly how it is so it knows what you're trying to give a texture to and then call it carrot on a stick or whatever your item is dot json and then open that up and then type in this exact stuff that will be in the description so you just want to copy this and the title of the file has to also match whatever this is layer zero item carrot on a stick so if you're using an iron nugget or something then it has to be iron nugget dot json and then item slash iron nugget and then you want to add overrides predicate like this and for every different texture that you're going to be using because you could have different custom model datas on the same type of item you have to add a new predicate like this so there's going to be overrides and then predicate. So if you want to add another one, then what you have to do is put a comma in the end, hit enter, and then paste another one so that you could have two textures. And that's what I did in my tank data pack for the controls. But anyway, since I only have one here, that doesn't really matter. So where I put item slash example, what you want to do is replace example with whatever your name of your file is. So mine is stormbreaker.json. So I re replace example with stormbreaker. So now if I save this and go into Minecraft and I equip the resource pack, you should see that my carrot on a stick is now the Stormbreaker Axe. And as you can see, it worked perfectly. So as you can see, it works normally. It does damage and it becomes lightning and kills mobs. And as you can see, it looks fine in the GUI, it looks fine in third person, second person, and it probably looks fine in item frame too. Yep, and it says Stormbreaker. So, now you should be able to make your very own models to add on to your custom items to make them look like actual custom items. So thanks for watching and in the final video of this series I will be going over how to make a way to acquire your item whether that be through custom items or through a custom mob loot table. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.